This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. This reading by Kara Schallenberg. www.kray.org. The Country of the Pointed Furs by Sarah Orne Jewett. Chapter 3 The Schoolhouse. For some days after this, Mrs. Todd's customers came and went past my windows, and, haying time being nearly over, strangers began to arrive from the inland country. Such was her widespread reputation. Sometimes I saw a pale young creature like a white wind-flower left over into midsummer, upon whose face consumption had set its bright and wistful mark. But oftener two stout hard-worked women from the farms came together, and detailed their symptoms to Mrs. Todd in loud and cheerful voices, combining the satisfactions of a friendly gossip with the medical opportunity. They seemed to give much from their own store of therapeutic learning. I became aware of the school in which my landlady had strengthened her natural gift, but hers was always the governing mind, and the final command, "'Take of Hysop one handful,' or whatever herb it was, was received in respectful silence. One afternoon, when I had listened—it was impossible not to listen with cottonless ears—and then laughed and listened again, with an idle pen in my hand, during a particularly spirited and personal conversation, I reached for my hat, and, taking blotting-book and all under my arm, I resolutely fled further temptation— and walked out past the fragrant green garden and up the dusty road. The way went straight up hill, and presently I stopped and turned to look back. The tide was in, the wide harbour was surrounded by its dark woods, and the small wooden houses stood as near as they could get to the landing. Mrs. Todd's was the last house on the way inland. The grey ledges of the rocky shore were well covered with sod in most places, and the pasture bayberry and wild roses grew thick among them. I could see the higher inland country and the scattered farms. On the brink of the hill stood a little white schoolhouse, much wind-blown and weather-beaten, which was a landmark to sea-going folk. From its door there was a most beautiful view of sea and shore. The summer vacation now prevailed, and, after finding the door unfastened, and taking a long look through one of the seaward windows, and reflecting afterward for some time in a shady place near by among the bayberry bushes, I returned to the chief place of business in the village, and, to the amusement of two of the selectmen, brothers and autocrats of Dunnet Landing, I hired the schoolhouse for the rest of the vacation, for fifty cents a week. Selfish as it may appear, the retired situation seemed to possess great advantages, and I spent many days there, quite undisturbed, with the sea-breeze blowing through the small, high windows, and swaying the heavy outside shutters to and fro. I hung my hat and luncheon-basket on an entry-nail, as if I were a small scholar, but I sat at the teacher's desk, as if I were that great authority, with all the timid empty benches in rows before me. Now and then an idle sheep came, and stood for a long time, looking in at the door. At sundown I went back, feeling most business-like, down toward the village again, and usually met the flavour, not of the herb-garden, but of Mrs. Todd's hot supper, halfway up the hill. On the nights when there were evening meetings, or other public exercises that demanded her presence, we had tea very early and I was welcomed back as if from a long absence. Once or twice I feigned excuses for staying at home, while Mrs. Todd made distant excursions, and came home late, with both hands full and a heavily laden apron. This was in the Pennyroyal time, and when the rare Lobelia was in its prime, and the Ella campaign was coming on. One day she appeared at the schoolhouse itself, partly out of amused curiosity about my industries, 
but she explained that there was no tansy in the neighborhood with such snap to it as some that grew about the schoolhouse lot. Being scuffed down all the spring made it grow so much the better, like some folks that had it hard in their youth, and were bound to make the most of themselves before they died. End of chapter 3 Read by Kara Schallenberg on January 29, 2006 in Oceanside, California.